and 7.51 p.m. <coughs> mm -hmm. Seems good. Ah, and again, I also rem uh, remember to set the power settings only after I start. But anyway, I mean, we can start already. You know what I ask at the start? What brings you to Latvia and what are your impressions? My impressions are great, but I choose this country. Basically, it is very randomly, you know. How come? Uh, I, I've chosen to travel a bit. I mean, right now, basically, I'm skipping my studies back in Moscow. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a, it's not like a big trip for me. It's like a, like uh, unwinding, kind of unwinding. Mm -hmm. So I decided to choose uh, Riga, Latvia in general. First, I was in Tallinn. First, right. Well, first I was in St. Petersburg from Moscow, mm -hmm. then in Tallinn, in Riga, and next gonna be uh, Kaliningrad, and then back to Moscow. Ah. So it's kind of a little trip in the Baltic countries and Kaliningrad. Mm -hmm. And I've chosen it because it is, uh, well, the very logical way to, to explore this area from the north to the south. I guess so. But how come you, well, you left out Lithuania, right? Not Lithuania, but... Not interesting? Estonia. Ah, in Lithuania. Yeah. I've been there two oh, times. In, but not in, on in this Rhodes. trip. Not on this trip. Ah. Uh -huh. Before. So? It was nice. But, it, you know, it's different from both Riga and Tallinn. It's kind of different you mean, styles. Uh, you mean Vilnius? And Vilnius and Tallinn are different from Riga and from one another in general. I guess so. I guess so. Wouldn't you say that there are more similarities between the these cities? Yeah, there are definitely some similarities. Because technically most of the architecture is pretty much around the same time, right? No, it's different, I think. Are you because sure? Riga has more like Soviet architecture, Soviet and uh, some kind of medieval, I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah like that's Gothic for sure. and, and some where um, special way. And Tallinn the same, right? Tallinn has... They have more uh, modern more, buildings. You know, Nordic style. Nordic what's, style. A, what's a Nordic style? Like uh, Scandinavian influence it has from Sweden. You mean in the modern buildings or the old buildings? Old buildings. Really? Because I think I, I, think I, I was... So, so uh, I've been to... I think I've been to Tallinn once, but I've been twice to Tartu. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sort of looked the same. Maybe Tartu me. is different, I don't know. I was in Tallinn only. Well, maybe they ha would have some different... Because I know Tallinn has uh, a lot of uh, new buildings, a lot of business-oriented uh, buildings. Yeah, because it was partly destroyed. By... Yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I just see the difference in the styles. And uh, in But you build... cannot explain why, you just see it. I, I'm trying to, but yeah, but it's it's complicated to use words for that. <laughs> you just feel like this way. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, architecturally, I guess you would... Uh, They're similar, you, but not you the would, same. You would, I guess you would say St. Petersburg takes the crown, right? About this uh, three or four towns? No, it's, it's completely about different. about the architecture? I mean, the, I, it's just I think I think St. Petersburg is quite grandiose, right? Yeah, it's just big. It's uh, less big than Moscow, for example, but it's still very big. No, it, in this Russian I mean, way, we have a lot of space there, and we like use it for... Why not to, to build this white uh, and big building right here in the city center? Because we have like we we can just can. <laughs> you mean in, in Petersburg or just both in, in general? In, in Saint yeah, it is in general. Hmm. But in Saint Petersburg and in Moscow as well. I've heard that there's a lot of construction going on in Russia because I had once. Um, um, I don't know if he was a tourist or not, but he was basically looking for business in Latvia, mm -hmm. and he explained to me that he has actually a construction company in Russia, mm -hmm. and that they yeah. Uh, that they are quite busy all the time. And I thought, no, no, what? I think now they are building like more uh, housing in the yeah, that's what he meant around the sea. Yeah, that's what he meant. Just a lot yeah. of uh, apartment houses, and I also thought, well, who who's going to buy them? I mean, everybody. Really? Yeah. I mean, right. is there a shortage? Completely. Really? Yeah, they buy it all the time. That's because that's why they build it actually. No, <laughs> they wouldn't look, build it if it. They, 
Well, holiday. well, that's the interesting thing, right? For instance, in Latvia, a lot of, uh, I think in in the past, I don't know, five years or so. Well, no, you can say definitely ten years or so. A lot of buildings were actually built specifically uh, with the intention of attracting foreigners. It wasn't mm. really for the locals, right? It had to do with uh, with a visa policy and on the residence permits and stuff like that. But it was specifically oriented, so it wasn't really for the local market. Mm. And uh, I know a, a few people who actually bought properties, and yeah, I mean it. It got them attracted, in, in a sort of. You know way. what I thought? Just because our guide and free walking tour today, mm. he told us about this Latvian problem on the young people moving out to the country, and like the population has decreased uh, for 15 years over, like a 20 percent, and it all it's all young people. I don't know about the percentages, but it's definitely emigration kinda, uh, kinda. oriented. Yeah, yeah, the statistics should be. Or yeah, because they like move out to, for example, Germany when the salaries are twice bigger. The United Kingdom is the most popular one still. The United Kingdom and this stuff. So we are in a basket with, I think, Lithuanians, Polish, uh, I think Romanians and Bulgarians usually try uh, Poland or, or, or Germany. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a sort of a migration from east to west. In, in a yeah, general sense. They, they just, uh, yeah, I mean, young people just choose where is it wealthier for them. Like the, I wouldn't say, more, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say wealthier because the, the funny thing is they move because it was always the case that uh, when you compare the the living standards, it's sort of here you live in let's say in a two flat bed uh, apartment or, or whatever. You go there and then you rent together with I don't know eight or, mm. or some people a house. In this aspect, yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, well, Wouldn't think about it. I've I've heard of people who are quite uh, comfortable when they know somebody who's already there for a long time. Then they can really manage themselves quite good. And yeah, I've heard of those cases. But as far as I know, usually, I mean, I had in my own family, for instance, at least one. Right, it was for I don't know one and a half or maybe a couple of years. Came back. So it's, I guess if you could you could say it's uh it's at least useful for experience because you can see what how the Western lifestyle how the Western work ethic is all all these things that might not be uh, really really dominant over here still I guess so because I've heard of a lot of people c who come back that they would like to actually see this and that also in the workplace or some somewhere else so it's i guess it could create some new fresh uh streams of, of ideas in a sense but the population the demographics i would say for sure is the is decreasing mm -hmm. because uh well uh the birth rate i don't know i'm not a specialist on it but i think the birth rate was somehow one and a half for eight for for each birth, there's one and a half or something like that mm -hmm. uh, mortality, right? So, yeah, it's definitely negative. But as far as I know, it used to be even worse, right? So in the Soviet so, Union, you mean? Hmm? In the Soviet Union, you mean? No, no, I mean the in the beginnings of two thousands. Mm -hmm. In the beginnings of well, well, you know, it's increasing, yeah, but very slowly, I think. I'm not, sure whether, not, is, uh, I'm not sure whether or not it, it's increasing right now. It was well, it, it was ten years ago for sure. I think it is. But well, I mean, if the tourist guide said said so, maybe <laughs> may, well, maybe he they have about some increasing the the birth rate. Hmm? He, he, he said only about the young people moving and about the population is aging. Is very aged now, so we have like you have two ways to resolve this problem to uh, lower pensions or to higher taxes <laughs> and it's just like the first mm, one. Lower first pensions one. High, uh, well I, g I guess that's the trend maybe because I've heard in Germany that they did that recently that they uh, raised yeah, the, the, same raised the there, pension actually. the pension age or what what's it called the retirement age retirement age right yeah. so I would say it's a it's a general problem mm -hmm. but then again nobody's really competing with the Chinese I guess Right, you're right. 
because I because I remember different. yeah because I remember to, uh, so speaking of with a couple of Chinese yeah they don't they don't even really understand it themselves <laughs> well how it happens because because uh, they say basically in every province it's almost like a life on their own it's like you we have the perception or oh China just a big country with a big territory they have no 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 I'm in this province they are in that province and part of that yeah yeah so it, it's quite local well i guess that's the biggest difference right i mean you you on the on the outside it seems like all oh, right that's the one big place on the map that's about it but then when you go in oh right and i've heard that about india as well mm-hmm. that they don't, they don't really consider the themselves are different from China. yeah they don't really consider themselves uh indian they consider themselves, I think, Punjab and then what, what have you. Well, we have kind of this problem in Russia, I think. It's not that way, but similar. I mean, the republics on the Caucasus. Do, do you mean the... Dagestan, the, Chechnya, Ingushetia. Yeah, I, I never understood it. I never understood it. How can they call themselves republics? Yeah, Cause, well... Because they don't really... You know, the, the, uh, for example, in the USA, there are states... Yeah. states meaning by the like uh, they are the part of the bigger country but they are well those they're are not the states actually and the the same thing is a federational <coughs> thing is in russia dagestan and this republic because states are, have their own constitution in america some of them well they have see, like a main law there but it's called constitution. well the american constitution yeah no I, I, i'm talking about russia ah so do they have also their own constitution probably not yeah they have actually really? yeah really but you know i can explain to you because i'm right. aware by the by chain yeah oh. and uh, we have like constitution of the russian federation it is like the main law over the all the russian federation all right. but uh and we have 20 i think 22 republics in what are which are included in the russian federation as right. like not independent states all right and they have like uh they are yeah well their own but not independent legal system uh-huh. which is like the following which is like the constitution of the republic in those 22 yeah really constitution and uh regional laws oh well, yeah uh, and in this level in the russian duration we have the constitution mm-hmm. and we have uh fe- constitutional federal laws and federal laws all right but in the level of region of region for example would it be like Dagestan or Bashkartostan or Primorsky Krai any of them any of the 85 they have what cons- what, what 85 85 subject to Russian Federation 85 thought, regions oh, what about the 22 22 of republics uh, approximately oh, damn this, this starts getting complicated so the, you have just the names. republics and then just republics 80. are like they have what's their the own, difference there, there is difference Republics have their own, well, kind of people or ethnic uh, society, like Dagestan. Everybody has. Huh? Everybody has. No. Right? For example, in, I don't know, Moscow Oblast, which is also a region. All right. There is no One of the society. 88, yeah? Yeah, one right. of the 85. 85, all right. Yeah. And also, it's um, basically just Moscow municipality then. Hmm? Just Moscow municipality, basically. No, it has meaning. Well, I mean, the municipal local government. This is the third level municipal. All right. Well, so yeah, it has it's another lower, layer of things, you know. All right. Yeah. And in, in those um, regions which are not republics, the main law called chapter, like the chapter of the UN, it's just called chapter. It's the main law where the where it, it said like uh primorsky cry is a region to the russian federation it consists like these areas oh it's in the russian constitution right no, it's in the original constitutions on the subjects of russia oh, but the same right. thing actually yeah in this in the constitution of the russian federation well it's it's kind of complicated was it meant to be that way yeah it's all established by the russian constitution of uh 90 of 1990 well well, you can lie to me. I just, mean, just, I don't fact check it. right now, right? 
because because uh, in our place it's 19, well it's sort of complicated but i guess it's a bit easier because we have just one constitution we have sort of regions yeah right? but you're not federation in latvia we have federation is just yeah, very see, similar I to the usa yeah yeah i see your point the but, then, but then again i don't really understand how could you be a, a true federation without having because you have the continental law right continental law yeah i yeah. mean you don't have the commonwealth yeah um, we have continental law system yeah yeah and well it seemed it seemed to me that only those common law countries have uh federative type of uh, no. countries no you're like because uh, canada for instance has also this type of i don't know four provinces or something like that they have those specific regional governmental types i think australia had some similar things as far as i remember but anyway, if you have it too, I guess good for you. But you have more mostly influenced by German and French law, right? Yep. Yeah. That's correct. So that's interesting because Germans don't really have that same type of system, right? They don't. Yeah. And no, they, what they about do. French? It's a federation. Germany's federation. They have like lands. Yeah, but I'm not sure whether or not the lands have their own constitution. Yeah, they have. Really? like a constitution it's just called another way it, it, they are called like chapters or uh grundgesetz grundgesetz sorry but there's only one grundgesetz what do they call them in the lands i don't know landgesetz land grundgesetz or <laughs> all right well yeah Something to be, like to be honest, honest i've never really thought about it that much in detail because it seemed to me that um sort of sort of germany and france would be centrally governed most of the time i just Actually, I in ju germany they have more um i know that there were differences in germany with the uh, start of the school year and all those a little bit you know some small things but in general yeah i'm not sure how how much independency they really uh can can use well, i would say that lands in germany have more independence than uh, regions in russia well Th right. that would be correct because we have like yeah they have regions different uh and like partly independent legal systems but uh, the function functions they and the competence of the regions to to like law in law making process is very little and uh it's all closed on the local issues like um, I don't know the max is healthcare or some questions about education and uh, maybe partly environmental law but nothing about the criminal law criminal procedure civil civil procedure and some like important stuff mm -hmm. that's all uh, is subject to the Russian Federation yeah my, my professor of law would like appreciate me like that Okay. I'm talking about that. Ah, <laughs> yeah. You she you earned your grades. <laughs> yeah. Huh? You earned your grades. Haven't I finished my like university? You ask. No, I didn't get it. I said you have earned your grades. Ah, uh, yeah, right? that's correct. All five. That's, that's, that's what I mean. Excellent. So would you say that there's the bigger, um, well, bigger integration? with uh, with the russian system than the german then of those uh, regional governments no i wouldn't that's very different from what i said so what did you say i have it on record <laughs> yeah you have it i said that the german regions yeah. have more independence than in germany than russian regions have in russia so i understood correctly you're saying that the russian regional governments are more integrated yeah and more dependent yeah, yeah more the, dependent of the exactly. central government yeah so what are you asking for but it's still uh, quite um well i wouldn't say kind of not confusing but still quite interesting because i remember uh reading or just hearing about that for instance dagestan has their own language right yeah, so yeah. so they are considering themselves bilingual well, many, they have many languages in Dagestan by the way really yeah they're like uh, so this... we're little communities on the area of Dagestan like 
villages or how do you call it? Oh, so maybe there are uh, eth- ethnic societies. Are those are like, those dialects or real separate languages? Yeah. And the different like na- not nations but peoples, you know, mm-hmm. living there. But they're all like under the Dagestan government, and this one is under the Russian Federation. One. It sounds complicated, to be honest. Because actually, it's not. Maybe I'm used to it. I know. Because because I mean, you know what got me more confused that uh, am I correct that the Chechens have a president? No. So what's that dude on the Instagram? Uh, Who is that dude? Yeah, Ramzan Kadyrov. He's uh, like a head of the Republic of Chechnya. Oh, but he's not the president. No. Huh, Whatever. Th- if if you would call him like president, what would change? I mean, yeah, we have we had like in Bashkortostan uh, like uh, um, the name of the head of the republic as a president, mm-hmm. and uh, the Russian government was like, "What? You can't like uh, call your president," and they like for forbid. All right. They forbid it. Yeah. They, yeah, because because I understand mayors, I understand there all there is no the, uh, but one. Oh, so so it's it's not a president there, right? Because no, I, I, I think president he's anymore. being called all over the place a president of Chechen Republic. So it's not it's not right. It's not it's not a cor- it's correct. It's like a head of the Republic of Chechnya, I think. It is the very correct legally correct way to call it. Hmm. To call him. Anyway, how did you decide to study law? Randomly, mostly. Well, we have like this uh, system of exams in Russia, Yige, and uh, it has like uh, I passed. I, I I've chosen to pass Russian language. Uh, well, it is necessary. Do you mean after secondary school or at what point after do you have those? All oh, right. So after eleven uh, years, we have in, in like eleven yeah. or twelve. Eleven. Now it's eleven. It it's uh, been twelve like. I know ten or most uh, years ago. Oh, no, it's sounds like, good. It's it's because funny enough, the Germans actually want to add another year to go uh, to thirteen, or even maybe they even did it already. Know. Yeah. So we are, basically we have nine year education as a like obligatory to everyone, and then two years you can uh, continue your studies in sc- in the school. You've learned this. Uh, you've studied this uh, nine years, or you can apply for a college. Like uh, you have, you, uh, uh, in this case, you're gonna uh, get the the common education, uh, g- general education, and uh, plus one profession, like uh, something. Uh, not, I know what not, you mean, not like a technical high, school. Yeah, technical, uh, technical school. Like uh, seems to me, seems to me we, or something. Seems to me we have almost the exact type of educational system. Yeah. Sounds sounds like me, but sounds better if you say that you went to eleven years, that you reduced the the years, because we have still twelve. Mm. It's nine primary school, secondary school three, and then afterwards most people go to let's say university, which adds another three or four years to, to the whole uh, you know, count. Maybe that's for the best, because now I'm twenty one and I like still have no idea what like what I'm doing <laughs> well basically well I, I do have idea an idea what I'm doing but in general uh, when I were 18 yeah. and I had to decide if I'm gonna do uh, studies in my in the university in a university and mm. I should apply for it or I should work or something you know the million ways to live your life well, right, and so I had no idea what like how how can I decide I'm only 18 I just been school in school but there's no need to decide and yeah there is a need to decide and mm-hmm. I decided for example to go to university to Moscow I moved from Vladivostok when I lived until I was and which is where which is uh, you know, if I imagine Japan for hmm? uh, where, where is Japan Japan Japan, Japan oh, China. So it's totally it's totally, totally far east. To the east all right far east well, you know the border so how China come, border so how a, come you have straight eyes because I thought because I thought all everybody uh, they looked Asian no, they don't. No? Russian population don't. Wait, so in Siberia, they look Asian, right? Which? In Siberia, they look Asian, right? Uh, it's Yakutia. Hmm? Yeah, some of them. There are, mm, like, a few republics, I think, they look like, did you say? Uh, Yakutia, Buryatia, 
Tuva and some of them. Some, some but not all of them is what you're no, saying. No, no. Hmm. But the Yakutia actually is the biggest, you know, republic in, in the Russian Federation. Yakutia? Yakutia. Yakutia. Yeah, well, maybe. And though they, they look like Asians. Uh, they look like Mongols. Which is different they, from Asians? I think so. It's different. You know, Asians, for example, they look different from each other as well. So, for example, look, China. And look, Japan. yeah, yeah. You can say that but for Europe, Chinese are European, a little bit different from Japanese and Japanese are a little bit different from Taiwanese. Not and little. They are very different. But, but, you, but, but you get the point when I say all of them are Asian. Well, if, <laughs> right? you, if you define you Asian by, by this uh, get the little point. eyes, of course, they are all Asians. See, thank I, you. <laughs> That's why I say you don't look Asian. Yeah, right, I don't. Which which is strange if you say you are from the east, from the far east, just the Especially. border of China and Russian Federation. You can just oh, right. actually yeah. walk yeah, yeah. there by, I don't know, five hours. Is it is it possible to walk into China? To work or to walk? To walk into China. It, it is possible. Yeah. yeah? But I, I mean, I I didn't do that. I don't. I'm not crazy <laughs> to do that stuff. Well, why would? would no, it is. It is not like uh, the border, like going through open? the town. It's not open. Huh? It's not like open. No, it's right? open for, for Vladivostok citizens. It's like I, I believe three days of free. Um, ah, free of like visa. Visit, now, now it's it's maybe even more like mm -hmm. a week or two weeks. It's all about tourism. But uh, actually, in the past when um, before the 2014 the sanctions and all this stuff mm -hmm. when the rubble was like twice higher currency uh against the dollar against the dollar against everything it's just like cost more the rubble mm -hmm. as a currency but don't they differentiate between the dollar the euro the yen all of those or they you mean do, but just against all of them I I mean in this context that against all of them. All of them, all right. Yeah, and like uh, we, well, basically we could buy for like a certain amount of rubles twice more as we can now, and we like Vladivostok citizens and, and Russians in, in general, they uh, was traveling to China to buy stuff and just to rest. It was very cheap for us. Uh -huh. I mean, I didn't actually, but many, many of my friends and nuns are were doing that. But now it's the it's the opposite. Now they are coming yeah, to you. Yeah, Ch Chinese people <laughs> nice. and the South Koreans are like everywhere in Vladivostok. They have like big buses full of them, and j they just come in Vladivostok to buy stuff. They just go from uh, one commercial center to another, and they buy jewelry. They buy like clothes, they buy mm -hmm. everything, but wait, literally so, everything. But, so, but, so, but they do produce that stuff by themselves, right? It's cheaper in Russia now. Wow. It's just cheaper. Wow. And Chinese people actually like to buy stuff, you know? They are very into it. They, yeah, like, I guess. they like things. They are, they, are, they are really, really um, market-oriented people. They like to be in markets. The, they like that more they have like uh, these be beliefs on in, in things you know for example the, the chinese yeah this stone I, I don't know what you call it in english uh, this uh, they do it in kaliningrad so it doesn't matter for example a stone means that you're gonna be like uh, wealthy and and uh, you're gonna get money for chinese and you buy this stone mm. uh, put it in your house and you're gonna be like better by the oh. and uh, the whole commercial activity like oriented to Chinese people yeah. is considering this they just like uh, selling the stuff they believe like they'll buy it I mean you know what I mean yeah yeah I mean if somebody can make a profit yeah why not? it's just a market why not yeah <laughs> so so they are just more or less uh, superstitious the Chinese uh, buyers they are well yeah i mean you have even even if you are not in china you have all over the place for instance different esoteric uh, shops yeah they buy and they and they sell crystals and they sell all types of not just crystals things. the crystals the crystals that mean i get it i get it yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true that's true <laughs> 
Well, but that's but that sounds sounds interesting because I would have always imagined that the Chinese quite would be quite um, well, not quite satisfied, but I mean quite uh, occupied with uh, their own market because I always thought that China has everything. Know what yeah, I mean? That yeah, China I produces mean, everything and it has everything. They uh, didn't you ask yourself why then they travel all the time? I mean, you can see Chinese well, tourists China, everywhere, no, literally no, no, no. everywhere. China, Chinese people are not not famous for traveling. Japanese people are famous for traveling. No, you can't. You, you don't well, you see can. Japanese so much. Yeah, there, there is no so many of them. But the, about the Chinese, about the one point mm. five billion people, like they are literally everywhere in groups. Usually, they don't travel. Single. Well, sure. Of course, you have tourists from all countries. But I wouldn't say that Chinese are really, really keen. I mean, comparatively, I would say there are more Russian tourists in the world than Chinese. I don't know. Comparatively, I mean, in common, common known places, there are always Chinese people. I mean, Paris and also Roma. Russian people. Yeah. I've, well. I've, when I went 2012 to Stuttgart, uh -huh. first language I heard was Russian. So I asked around, hey, uh, I was Russian. Yeah, 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 they just come here. They, they like it here <laughs> and so yeah pe people and and I, I heard the same in Berlin yeah I they're heard, everywhere literally I heard the same pro from Austrians so just to learn Russian do you speak Russian by the way very they very say that every second in Latvia and in Estonia and in Lithuania speaks Russian I think the older generation does yeah but not only them because if young people let, let's, let's say and there are many of like uh, Russian families here Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Many or like half Russian, live. half, half, half uh, Latvian. I always half say, Latvian. if you would consider the fact that not only Russian, uh, but also Ukrainian, Belarus people and stuff like that, they all speak basically Russian over here. Yeah, they do. If you consider them together, I would say uh, they are the majority in Riga in uh, and in the near, near, near border uh, yeah. regions. So yeah, but uh, speaking about uh, who can speak the, the language, yeah, I mean, I definitely know that, let's say, people who are 10 years older than me, right, everybody speaks, basically everybody speaks, people who are my age, or maybe 10 years uh, uh, younger than me, yeah, it, it, it gets reduced, it gets reduced, because I, I can give you an example. They when don't. I, when uh, I was in primary school, sort of interrupting. They don't uh, teach Russian like in schools, right? That's now, what right? I wanted to tell you. We had uh, English was uh, for everybody, and then you could choose uh, German or Russian. Well, right? so I chose Russian because I already knew uh, German, mm. right? And I took it. Didn't learn anything. Why? Because we basically had a teacher who just taught us to recount well not poetry but sort of just the 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 story about the family who got who pulled out the vegetable I know this story right and stuff like that and that's about it it's about it all those years oh well we learned the alphabet right you which, can read which, Russian I suppose I can pronounce the letters yes and you can read like the text with a translator or something yeah, for sure. But uh, when you would just give me a Russian text and say, what does that say? Mm, a bit complicated. But I could do definitely say with the letters. I could definitely say the letters. Yeah. By the way, speaking about this Russian stuff, in this trip, I don't feel, really feel abroad. You know, I was in Tallinn and here, it is just every second speaks Russian. And I don't really need English even. I mean, everybody that's why, speaks that's it. That's why it's a popular destination. Because you actually have a quite um, rare talent in that you are speaking quite good English. Well, thank you. You too. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it, how that came about for you, but it's definitely rare. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Not many people, even for your age, who come from Russia, they don't speak uh, that good. And so, yeah, when they come to Riga, I mean, it's, it's fair enough. And so, do, do you, did you learn uh, just by, by 
No, no, no. Well, watching. first by books and then practice. I mean, I, I've, you really, I've been, huh? You really learned by books, like specifically. Yeah, I had a book from Cambridge University Press. It's like uh, blue book. Wait, how old were you? I was in the first grade, eighteen. Eighteen. Well, they teach English in school, in schools in Russian. All right. But it's uh, it's bad. It's very sad to teach that. Or I didn't learn. So when did you learn English? In the university. Wow. Nineteen. So I was so teen. all now that you are speaking is basically coming from the university. Yeah, I had a yeah. desire then, only then. Impressive. That's impressive. It's just all about practice. I don't know. It's nothing to impress about. Dude, look, I've met a lot of people, right? I'm telling you right now. If you learn English in university and now you are speaking that well, it's impressive. Hmm. Telling you right now, Cause most I, mean, people, I just had a desire to do it. I learned, to, I, I bought a book, I guess and that's I studied a big factor. Uh, every day, yeah. and then I had motivation. Like in Europe, first time, uh, uh, my first time. I mean, when I arrived, my English was um, like quite bad mm. because I didn't have practice before that. Mm -hmm. But you know, things moving, and then I like started to speak more understandable first it sounds pretty good pretty good the same thing was when i was traveling in spain mm -hmm. and i was talking spanish after uh, learning it by books you know when you see the, when you learn it bo by books yeah with books i don't know what to say it correctly uh, you can just you can read it maybe you can write it you can understand the grammar, the like declinations or something. All right. But when you and, and maybe you can understand uh, like uh, orally slowly. But when you start to talk, it's it's different. The same thing now I feel about the German language. I can understand what I'm being said mm -hmm. and I can read, I can write. But about speaking, it's like just you just need to get used to it. So what is your process? <clears throat> Let's say you, when was the first time you actually wanted to, to try to learn Spanish? Just randomly, I just wanted to. After my trip to Europe, after my first trip. So you we were what, 19 or? Yeah, I think so. A year and a half ago I was, yeah, 19. Oh, so 19, you decide you want to learn Spanish. Yep. But you don't know any anything about the Spanish. No, I, I did know some things. Oh, like, like si Spanish hola. is like, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> si, gracias or something. Yeah, yeah, but what I mean is, all right, you would like to learn it, but you don't really know the language. So what was your first step? What did you do? I bought a book. <coughs> which no, I, I actually borrowed a book from my ex-girlfriend. Now mm -hmm. it's a guess. Yeah, yeah. It, just a book and I started to, like, I opened it. Yeah. I've read, like, what they said and uh, there are like but was it a book for university students was it a book for ki children yeah basically it's for university students i think it's in russian yeah spanish in russian yeah and generally the 80s and i started to do uh, exercises every day so you had some Sometimes discipline some lectures uh, in the university Mm. Just it's, it's kind of automatic work. You just, if you know the rule, if you already read it mm -hmm. and you like kind of understand it, you can read the exercise to understand what they want to, from you, like yeah. write or translate something. And you just start to automatically, almost automatically write things down on your, on the paper. And that's how it works. I think you, it worked uh, like uh, almost three times for me. I think it is. That's what I wanted to say. It seems like you are almost the exception to the rule. Because <laughs> usually people say, well, yeah, I don't really, I didn't really learn a language by just reading. I, j I just learned the language when I immersed myself into wh whether or not it was just traveling to the country, living in the country is the be best. So all yeah, those Yeah, I think it's the best things. way to start to speak. As I said, the thing was, it was Spanish for me. Yeah, well, it sounds like you had the methodology that... And nobody really 
tell told you to do that right you just no, you I just, just thought all right i just take the book start reading yeah yeah well it's i'm so not simple I'm, i mean what, no no i'm not surprised that it's uh that it's so simple i'm surprised that it really stuck i mean that you really learned it that way because usually it's you learn you read and you forget you read and you forget you read you pass the test you forget but that's, th that's it's all about <clears throat> i didn't have tests is it was just all about myself and I was responsible to myself <laughs> and I studied every day literally every yeah that's day. what I said you had discipline yeah because I just wanted to I I got satisfaction of it you know it was like enjoying I was enjoying study. oh wow why I don't know I just liked it that's the way it is no it, it I think it wouldn't like uh, work for uh, anyone this definitely way. not yeah. some people need to be like disciplined from outside they need, need a teacher or something yeah they but need a I dialogue. just realized that I don't really need it uh, and yeah I'm a teacher for myself so did you do you learn other things as well like that law basically law languages so basically some, you spoke some marketing stuff because th that's a bit funny right you spoke basically Russian till you were in university, and then you just decided, all right, I'm I'm just start speaking, basically two at least two other languages, right? No, first it was of course only about English because no, I, I realized. All oh, right, three languages, right, right, three languages: English, German, Spanish. German is in the process. Spanish. Uh, I met a girl in hostel, and uh, <coughs> my Spanish after this while not speaking Spanish was like. Yeah, okay, but uh, I think I need time to remember it. Mm -hmm. You know, this passive stuff, the language becomes more like you need more time to speak it. And yeah, but if I if I am in Spain or in Latin America, I am just I think I will remember it very fast. I think Spanish people could mistake you for being Spanish, at least from the looks. From the looks, yeah they could I owe, because I they have many like arabic blood there arabic Spanish. well yeah well i guess and so yeah. but yeah spanish people look like this Pretty yeah much. about my outlook it, it's funny because in russia i'm like uh, uh some someone from these republics or from uh dagestan or from chechnya or something like this all right because I look like it, but ah. actually I have uh, um, blood from Georgia by my father, which is probably also it's like one eighth, accurate. Huh? which is also probably accurate, right? Georgian people do look like that. Yeah, yeah. they they look quite like that. Mm -hmm. They have like this nose and the uh, and the brows are white. Yeah, but when I'm when I'm going to when I go to Spain. I can look like Spanish when I go to I don't know Mexico mm -hmm. I can look like Mexican mm -hmm. that's funny thing about me and probably in the Near East Near East well Near East um, I mean Middle East yeah, yeah yeah Middle East yeah you could go to yeah as well Iran Iran hello by the way I'm going to go there my Should couch surfing there? host Huh? Should you go there? That's interesting thing, because after um, before three days ago, I wouldn't <coughs> even think about it. But my host in uh, Tallinn, mm -hmm. he told me about his trip in Iran, All right. and he said that that was just amazing. And I was very surprised because I thought like you know the Middle East, Iraq, Iran, like Palestine, it's all about like military stuff and uh, some conflicts everywhere else and you know but he told me that it is it is not really it is at all not true and well, the uh, big city it is very safe in iran the big cities are definitely really more not the whole iran is safe there are no oh, conflicts well. on the territory of the iran of iran i'm not sure that's and about really this shari because iran is a big place i'm uh, i'm doubting that yeah, your host traveled all of iran uh quite uh four cities Tehran, Ayast, and tomorrow I don't remember. 
It's because I think, yeah. Well, I'm not saying that they are in a constant war or anything, but I remember in... Uh, it's it's all about uh, Iraq. Yeah. You just confuse things. I, I, I checked it. You can, you can oh, well, check it as well, well on the internet. Don't get me wrong. Of course, Iraq has their yeah, own Iraq problems. Has conflicts. For sure, for sure. But, but the problems are not really related to Iraq or Iran. They are related to those... Um, uh, organizations like yeah yeah all those guys. groupings those those no, you're, fundamentalists Iran, and all those they, things they just well basically they can exist there and do their activity carry out but as far as I'm concerned and as I checked in the internet and as my host told me it is just okay there yeah yeah I'm not saying that and what well uh, the most uh, the most interesting thing it's not about the conflicts and that stuff it's about sharia law and the, the like this muslim mm, thing well but that is about those religious things because yeah. one group thinks that you should do it like this and the other group thinks no 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 uh, we should iran do it like is that. all a sheet i'm not sure about that all of them i mean um because they, they there is like, a law they, yeah, yeah, official sure. like restrictions and yeah. this is sheet yeah yeah, yeah. sheet way there of is the official stuff. law yes yeah but the groupings are like gypsies they live without the borders yeah they, they are. live somewhere here here in turkey maybe in iraq they're just all over the place what i'm trying to say is that uh like what do you think about the young people in iran <coughs> me yeah how, how are they they have probably really say? tasty recipes for different uh, nice uh, meals that's what i think but other than that i think they have um they have a really really uh, hard time because modern technology has brought them sort of well urges to be really really modern but they are a traditionalist country Ever since the Ayatollah took over, they have become a really, really f fundamental traditionalist country. And so uh, I think that it, it will create a lot of conflict w within this generation. Because they see, it's like in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, for instance. Only recently had the, the prince allowed women to drive with, uh, I think, the, the husband nearby or something like that, right? Before that it was Im unimaginable mm. right so all these well little little steps create either an uh, a smooth transition or they can create a sort of a big drastic uh, transition and i think it's it's a, for iran it's it's the second part because because they are not so uh friendly with uh, americans saudi arabians are so the Arabians are uh, close friends with the Americans. Now Iran is mm, a lot friendlier with the USA than before. There are no sanctions right now, you know, in this stuff. They're like kind of made kind of friends with the USA. That's bold. That's that's a bold statement. Yeah, well, that that's isn't that that isn't uh, totally true, but you know. In the direction, in yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the direction, direction, the vector is, is like yeah, this yeah. to make uh, great, um, good relationships. Yeah, between those two. But uh, yeah, you say uh, you are talking about the young people in Iran in a very abstract way, like what are they going to do, like the generation, yeah. Yeah. But if you imagine one particular person in Iran, male or female, male. All right. What would you say about like him? Oh, his good. views, he, what he, what he's doing, or something. What he's doing in Iran? Yeah, he, his like uh, life activity. Mm, what he's up to? He's probably quite good with his family. Uh, probably going to university after school. Uh, I mean, after the secondary school, and uh, doing some form of I don't know what's the most popular job over there, but probably also some administrative office work, I guess, because they have a lot of businesses over there still. So I imagine it would be quite similar to, let's say, a British uh, young person. If it's a male. Yeah, it's a male. But what about his views? About what? About religion. About religion? Don't question the dogma. But they do. Openly? Not openly. Publicly, they do all this stuff. Mm. 
I mean, uh, this is the law. They yeah. can just resist and say, I'm not going to mm -hmm. to behave this. But behind the closed doors, they have everything. Like, yeah. Like alcohol, drugs, gay couples. They have yeah. parties, uh, noisy music, everything that uh, any like young person who is like quite kind of liberal, not very conservative. Yeah, what they say. Yeah, they have everything and they yeah. do that activity, that kind of activity. And uh, about the like informational vacuum that the press are like talking to us. No, they don't have. It, it just does, don't exist. It doesn't yeah, exist. But I'll, I'll because they have technologies. They yeah, have like smartphones. I mean. Yeah, the official press uh, tells them that, uh, tells them nothing about the outside. And if it does, it, it tells it in very, you know, specific way mm -hmm. to make public opinion in some some aspect yeah, yeah um, the yeah, press is ro they, regulated they just don't believe they just make fun of it because they have like phones and they just google it <laughs> and it's very you know uh ironic this whole sharia law and uh islam official islam i mean not as a religion but as a uh, way to organize a state they just make fun of it because they, yeah, they behave and publicly, but they don't believe in it. They don't accept it as like their views. Yeah, and they... some of them are even atheists or agnostic mostly. They just don't care about this stuff. They are young people. They are, I don't know, partying and, and studying and you know traveling. This. That's what I mean. J just young, just young. Yeah, you said it correctly. At at, at some point. They just they will, as usual, young people as everywhere. Because at, cause at some point they will, they will just try to spill it over. And that's the question, whether or not the yeah, spillover will be smooth or it will be... Oh, I think it's not going to be smooth. That's what I mean. Because it's, it's really... It's sort of... Here's the thing. Now we sit here, right? All this 21st century technology around uh -huh. us. And we can sort of look in real time towards other countries and see oh damn they had they have still the 20th century or they have still the i don't know i don't know sharia law was probably found found it a thousand years ago or something like that so they have still that system right and think about if the catholic church for instance wouldn't wouldn't go with the times nobody would go to church i mean now few people go but if that would happen nobody would go probably because nobody really Nobody wants to hear this, the stuff that was said 1,000 years ago. That's, that's not yeah, really... Yeah, in this way, Baptist Church is like better. They are going... Or, you know, I, I've mentioned in Tallinn, Methodist Church. Methodist Church. I didn't... I, are, I those, still are those the vegetarians? I still don't know what this thing is all about. I just saw it. And the, uh, what I noticed to Methodist. me, it's just the church was in a very modern architecture style. It mm -hmm. was like this roof it's all metallic yeah and the doors and everything it, it was it hasn't had nothing to do with like a traditional church you can imagine like from uh, made of wood or something and do the couple with the you know this stuff but that's the interesting thing right because yeah we definitely think of uh, those churches as those typical stereotypical but then again in america they have even those mega churches which are just They're like a mostly, right I'm not sure. I'm I'm not really that knowledgeable about that. But, but you know many things about the USA as far as I understand. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. I mean, everything that's related to technology or information is mostly related to America. Mm, yeah, at, le right. at least uh, for for from my point of view, right? I mean, if I go into YouTube, I'll probably watch mostly content yeah. that's coming from uh, the USA. Uh, yeah, yeah. By, by the way, what do you do? I'm a legal advisor. Mm -hmm. And in which sphere? Army. Army? Yeah. Legal advisor in army. Yep. Great. And well, you... It's not really that uh, fancy. I mean, most of, most of the time it's an email there, a paper over there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite the uh, office related so you're more like in administrative law 
sort of is it interesting to you ah man that's a, that's how, a how difficult did you question come to it? Hmm? how did you come to this this like service? well overall i would say it's useful right but for you yeah but that's only because it's me right because if you look back at my let's say fast for the past five years i've been i think in, in five positions and all over the place i was in uh, environmental agency i was in a procurement agency procurement right? procurement would be um when uh, let's say when a government institution wants to buy something mm -hmm. they have to make it it in a different in a specific oh, yeah, process I see what you mean. so i was in the agency who actually oversees the Going process who can actually check well, did you do that correctly and stuff like that because mm -hmm. my speaking about the education right after the first nine years of school uh, i went to the technical school and my first specialty was uh, accounting so i got uh, so f after four years i got uh, education plus the accounting specialty and so yeah i've been uh, working f in accounting related fields for more than and 10 then years you got a lawyer's degree and then yeah and then afterwards. bachelors or masters masters bachelors yes. and masters in both and law yeah in law yeah and so i always choose some well sort of new job that might be interesting that can add to my already existing knowledge like because, counting yeah because everything is more or less related to either numbers finances or law, law right on economics right so i try to do that so um yeah it's been quite interesting when you when i look back mm -hmm. but if i if i would have to do it for the rest of my life i wouldn't do it for sure because let's you know what i when i wrote in um because we had um i don't know at what point but we had to actually basically state what are the um, major tasks for let's say 2018 right mm -hmm. in in our particular field so i wrote to make myself, um, what's the correct word? Basically, to to make myself not useless, but so so sort of to do everything I can, so everything runs smoothly and I'm not needed anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because because automatically. Yeah, yeah. Because I like to have automatic, <coughs> systematic processes in place. Yeah, you you like to improve things. That's yes. It's a creative like. Yes, and uh, yeah. Well. You, you you mentioned that uh, you like to read uh, when it comes to at least for languages, right? So I like to read uh, books on different topics. And yeah, one of those uh, is definitely definitely business. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned also marketing. And I wouldn't say I'm, I'm big into marketing as well, but I'm definitely seeing the usefulness of it. So uh, you asked me, for instance, whether or not I will be working in law in, I don't know, five years. I'm not sure, but maybe it will be marketing because it seems so to be just in, in search of something interesting for you. you well, just to have to, decide for so far. Well, to have that sort of um, ability to adapt. Yeah. That's more. That's why I'm interested. Because that's I, the most important. I don't know, but at least for me, it's it's it has proven to be quite useful. Yes. I mean the evolution. It's all about fitting and adapting, but yeah, sort that's of, another topic. Sort of, yeah. And are you enjoying to be a lawyer? No. If you, so if you, if you, if you, are you like a judicial if you, lawyer? If you speak about enjoying, as in a sense of euphoria, happiness, kind of no, 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 of course. But uh, but I say, but but you know what the sense when you have the when you see something that could be of benefit to you and other people, right? And if you do the job uh sort of in that way that 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 you see the benefit of it right that's something that is satisfying right but not happy or or, or really really no, it's not euphoric about this. Yeah. these terms they're not proper to this well case. look i've i've actually met uh, people people from uh, theater who from said where? from theater well theater right actors Ah, theater. Yeah, who actually said, "Yeah, we enjoyed 
every yeah, time they, they can enjoy it because they are like actors well but think about it for this your... type of yeah 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 but process. well think about it for yourself would you enjoy to repeat yourself over and over and when one uh one uh, well, you can do one play time, like instance, differently no. and to like create something. of course you have it's, different it, it, you know almost every profession has a field of creativeness you can yeah. like drive a truck even creatively but it's, now it's, you are getting to because <laughs> look of, of course you can say truck driving has some creativity attached to it. yeah it's it's but, more le- it's a way less than for example in in acting yeah or at least in, in uh, law stuff yeah but still you can like uh, choose you can say your employer for example we can go actually not this way but this road and it would be better you can like uh, improve your you, you know what I mean the, you in can, a, you in can a opportunities principal way I everywhere yes. but yeah in some professions uh, you have like more uh, more white uh, wider yeah, field yeah. of creati- creativeness creativity that is, yeah. uh, and law is it in law you can like maneuver in different ways uh, yes. especially if you deal with you know special uh, like unusual cases and you you need to like create a new way a new approach to, to the uh, separate law for example to, to implement it you know I see what, what I mean? you mean yeah, yeah. yeah and in acting it's even more it's it's you know you can act like this emotion or this emotion it's quite they, it's micro it's micro level. it's micro but it's like uh, collecting it's being collected by yeah and the energy you you invest in your activity uh, it's being paid in, in this level of acting it's like we're hard but don't you think that's that's the reason why marketing is probably the marketing fu- is also great yeah, yeah the, the future yeah. of basically every every profession because sort of uh, marketing can allow you to be in any profession. Yeah, marketing is useful. And actually do something with it. Yeah. So how did you come to marketing? Just got interesting. Just got interested. Because, you know, I thought first about, you know, in general, the, the things and approaching this. Mm. Uh, I thought that uh, marketing in, uh, in, in this in it, in its concept conceptual aspect is literally everywhere you sell yourself to like when you are trying to get a job mm. you sell yourself and the way you do it uh, on it depends your future salary your position in like everywhere and your relations it's just a simple example but it, mm. it shows yeah it shows it and uh, I don't know did somebody even know? for a lawyer it's it's uh, important to be also a marketologist because even mm. you're if you are if I you practice know. for yourself like uh, or with colleagues yeah you must you you have to uh, sell your like services or services i think i think for the highest paid lawyers it's always the case that their only marketing is their current or previous clients who who just yeah. say who just recommend them basically so yeah it's it's by doing the best job you can that you do the best marketing you can i mean i think everyone should understand the basis of marketing that's that would be enough i mean how it works mm. basically do you think uh and, and, and this is go- it goes uh, that leads uh, to <laughs> a more uh, general aspect the basis of economics everyone should understand the basis of economics I think most people do. It's just that they don't really about the most people. I would argue with you. Well, it's just that they don't speak the economics language, but they understand it as an uh, look. You might not be able to describe Newton's law of physics or gravitation, right? But you can actually understand when somebody drops. That's what I mean. That's very different. Not really. The, uh, not the, really. Something the way you, you have... see it doesn't mean that you understand it. Actually, no, you, no, but that's no, what I mean. There's a three three things you but can that's... understand it and describe by by terms, and you can think you can uh, you understand it and yeah, you, yeah, no, no, you can uh, <laughs> well describe it but not understand. You can understand it but not describe, and you can not understand and not describe. Mm-hmm. I think the most people are here. I think most people they, are... they see that that is falling. Yeah, right, but. What does it mean? 
Uh, what the reason? I think of most. This? I think most what people are in a position uh, where everybody else is when they get asked. So what is music? Yeah, I know the term. I somehow, I I recognize music, but if I would have to actually describe or do anything with it verbally, to, yeah, I wouldn't be able. You to. You personally wouldn't. No, most people won't. But you, you understand that. I can. No, I mean the no. harmony, the theory of like mathematic, t mathematical theory. Of well, harmony. a theory is not well, the, the tone fits the tone, and that's music. Well, a theory is not an explanation, right? It's not really. The no, it's not about the words. It's it's the perception of it. It's not about the words. It's just the basis understanding of basis things. That yeah, yeah, but are that's surrounding us. Yeah, but that's you what just I mean. Have to yeah, understand but, but, that. but that's what I mean. Most people have that sense. But they have not the tools to actually describe it to you in the same way you would describe. Well, they should have. I don't know. What would be the benefit of having everybody speak the same language or speak the, speak the same terminology? Doesn't that really... would be the basis for understanding each other? It has never because been there. For example, it that, has that's never interesting. Been. The same don't attract. Opposites attract. No, but if we had this language you're talking about we could if if everyone yeah had this language mm. we could discuss the very important issues like political issues like uh, how do how society must like uh, process it not really and not really one. because the because understanding would be still different but the words would be would exist in in the minds of every people each people well that's the point i'm making you can put it's your, everywhere uh, in the it's, uh, uh, it's, it's the point I'm making that you can put words in a mouth, but if the mouth doesn't say with the same intention, it won't be a useful discussion. It doesn't matter what the word is, whether it's the same you would use, it's just the intention behind the words that really counts. And how can you actually... Depends. De uh, how, Depends. how can you really know the intention? Well, you just try to figure it out as, as soon as as fast as possible thinks we are talking about the different topics not really i mean because i, I you're talking I about the communication i understand, the, I, I, I understand I, the principle you are applying that everybody should be able to discuss the topics that relate to them by words. equally yes yes but that's, i'm but that's I'm what saying, are the words for but i'm saying that that hypothetical model wouldn't really uh well work the same as you think it would in in real life because the intention you never know the yeah. stuff that goes on between the their ears won't be the same and the way the only way how you can equalize that would be to have them the same the same sort of experiences the same training which would be pro probably impossible just think about it everybody should come from your region and have your similar experiences it's impossible no i'm not talking about this at all yeah no you know, look you are saying just, just about the curiosity you know i think each and everyone should like be interested in some important well on my view issues like the reasons uh, well the general law laws of physics the mm -hmm. general basis of economics the general basis of law the general basis of this and this and this to get the entire understanding of the world uh, the person is living i think it's, in, I, I think it's uh it's like kind of ideal i yeah. think it, i think it's borderline hypocritical because how how much do you pay attention to electricity well my school teaching no no what i mean is how much do you uh, really how, how it works that's what i mean well you i just, can explain it to myself no no but what i mean is you just use it basically but it's not no it's, it's not, not like you every day are not every day but if if you're being asked like i am being asked like right, right this yeah, yeah right now and i can explain that uh, as maybe i am uh, i would be mistaken by by understanding of the electricity but i can Maybe. explain like uh, there are some well it's difficult to say in english it's difficult to say it in general but in russian i would say it 
you know there are this stuff they are moving and integrate interconnected with each other they're like atomic or you know what i mean yeah that's, that's yeah, yeah but that's some things difficult. that other people have actually described it's not like that you figure it out you just took somebody else's explanation and well about uh, this is different uh, even because it is like uh, natural natural science technical science yeah but what i was talking about is more about the uh, society science the economics which and is this which is even more trickier because it's not objective it's not objective but yeah it would be more objective if everyone like had this understanding because some well most people just are not interested and uh, had have no curiosity to explore things and to learn like how it works very basically there are consequential things or not consequent uh, conventional things mm. you know in, in in every social science conventional mm. and like you know well the basis uh, the principles of law right they are pretty similar pretty the same in like in continental and common law it's like the uh, well hmm. let's talk about the continental law it is right. like well i didn't speak it in english but legality right no let's let's go further to the uh, roman law all right Pacta sunt servanda. All right. Um, nemo putest, nemo podest uh, iudex in propria causa. Know what I mean? Eh? Non bis in idem. And some other of them. You understand Those, what I'm trying I'm, to I'm say? I understand, yeah, but yeah. you are speaking about concepts. Those, those are inventions. Those are concepts, but where they are conventional. I mean, every lawyer would agree with them. They are very basis level. No, no, no. Flow. What I mean is, those are concepts that were not granted. It wasn't. Here's the thing: when when ancient philosophers spoke about natural law, their their logic was, here's the thing: we are all humans, right? So it seems that we have some sort of equalizer. And though that equalizer is not within our realm, it's within either God, nature, whatever, right? But then, actually, people had the civilization system quite expanded, and they say, yeah, actually, if we have a contract, we need to actually fulfill it, otherwise, what's the point, right? But then again, you have a lot of, lot of instances where they say, yeah, you have a contract, but whatever you should be uh, more uh, cu curious no but you should be more cautious that's it and that's wrong and if it, well, mm. yeah well i mean imagine imagine dude that. no imagine no imagine in this society when some people uh, talk like you can not fulfill uh, a contract yeah there are some people yeah. even, even today yeah well but if they had this understanding of the basis of law of very theory of law they wouldn't say that because they would understand that you, if you are getting into a contract you like have to fulfill it or they would be aware of they would be aware of the consequences like the legal responsibility yeah well that's the point the legal consequences legal the consequences are not legal the consequences are physical that's yeah, that's why physical. that's why that's why society uh, in the form of government have rules not because you and other people have uh have concluded that this would be the best way but because the government the, the would like for you not to be smashed by some somebody else so yeah, so if somebody smashes you it's the government right <laughs> for them and but it's it's only come from a compromise that's why that's why i like legal anthropology so much because anthropologists they really just make those brutal simple questions and then they try to find whether or not there are real life examples in modern times let's say they have um, they have a question well how do really people make um, 
exchanges how do they trade for instance mm -hmm. right and then they try not to go to some some big city or whatever they try to go to an amazon jungle and find 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 those people who don't really know what the well yeah yeah what the wheel is right and so so they just observe what so what do they do and so that from that they want ah oh, so that's how they do it hmm, all right and they just then compare it with everything else that they can know and yeah they don't they don't approach that subject like yeah we would do it like this so it means no 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 they just all right what would they do and then it's just look oh hmm. that's that's strange all right let's write it down that's usually similar not really i mean this this things about not the really e economics and the law. not really speaking about economics it's uh, it's one of the hot topics that's a uh, uh, i could recommend a book by david greber for you uh where he basically dismantles adam smith he basically says adam smith was a philosopher he wasn't an economist it, it wasn't really uh, a branch of science back then mm -hmm. it wasn't really established he was a philosopher who basically said well as far as i, I see in the world people trade to actually fulfill their own desires and by doing so other people can fulfill their desires as well so they and can this way the, the whole society uh, benefits from it benefits. yes and so what he said was uh, what the anthropologist in the book said well that's a good explanation in theory but even adam smith admitted that he hasn't really seen any examples of an imaginative hand or whatever and so uh, the anthropologist basically just stated examples of real life cases what they have uh, seen in real life and in real life they concluded that people who are or um, yeah basically people who are friendly with each other they don't trade people who are uh, an an antagonistic uh, towards uh, rivals they trade rivals trade meaning I will give you this, you will give me that, and that's it. We are even. That and that's what I concluded. If I don't like you, I trade one. You agree to give me that for this. All right. See you later. But that's only if we don't like each other. If we like each other, I'm saying you can have this. I don't really need it. Well, maybe if I need something later, you you can give me. But uh, yeah, maybe. All right. So it's just that. Um, the, the the real specific trading they observed only with uh, somebody people who didn't like each other or tribes who didn't like each other and so he goes on it's a quite interesting book uh, called it's called that the first five thousand years and uh, the author is david greber i'll write it down and uh, and it's it's sort of interesting because he has actually also a, I'm not sure whether or not he has a legal education, but he has a quite also a, a legal approach to it because he because he uh, talks about also that the Roman times where somebody could own a slave and what what are the specifics of that. So it's it's a, but it's a really difficult book to read. I mean, almost on on every page, I had to stop and look for the dictionary, because because he's a, I guess he's a Harvard professor, right? Yeah, and it's a dense book, but but quite interesting. I mean, you you can understand it's just that it takes time, because mm. uh, he uses a lot of a lot of words. But yeah, that's what that's what I mean, right? You have a professor stating one thing about the same subject and then some some somebody uh, else might state about that subject some something completely different right and how do you equalize them that's a challenge that's science do you believe in social engineering because i think that would be uh, quite easy a social yeah. engineering and yeah, i know what it, the, yeah. and and uh, the reason why i believe is because you mentioned Iran with uh, smartphones. China doesn't have that. China just says, no, you don't need that. <laughs> you you won't have any Facebook. You will have, I don't know what's their... What's WeChat. Their, 
probably yeah so yeah you'll have that right and you know you don't need google <laughs> right you can have what's it baidu or something like that they have their own they have their own and yeah they don't really complain about it chinese people are quite quite um uh satisfied as far as i can tell well they have another at least in the big city about i think well, they want to raise their living standards quite fast. Yeah, it's all about economics there. They just, I think, don't need time to care about the politics so much. They have to, like, earn money or to run business or something. There's such questions for before the families in China. So it's not... Well, they're just not get used to think about politics because they have the main party. Just as quite quite similar as we have in Russia, for example, and uh, as we had in the mm. Soviet Union. Nobody cared yeah, about the politics because it just uh, didn't mean. Because uh, any, think... anything you uh, say, anything you think, and you like exchange opinions, political opinions. Uh, anyway, if the party, the main party, Communist Party, decides to like let it be this way it would be this way i think the comparison with the soviet might be all right but with the current one i think you have uh, different uh, parties now no yeah, yes actually yes but no you know we have dude uh, every you... every election there's some news that oh look this opposition leader did this and uh, so it seems to me that it's, it's getting with uh, more than one Look, party. Have, um, it's just that basically four main parties. See, basically, that's a, it's quite a lot. United Russia. You know this. You, you know something mm -hmm. about the political structure in Russia. It's not well, at all. I'll tell you. Four, uh, three of them are very deeply connected, suspiciously. It's like in Germany. The no, coalition. it's different because it's a coalition. Because the numbers, you know, this United Russia Party, Putin Party, Medvedev Party, this uh, like government, ruling party, right. has in the parliament uh, 70, I believe, 76, let it be 76 percent. And how much does Merkel have in Germany with their, his, her party? She has about 40 or something. Well, all right, but still a lot. But still twice less. <laughs> yeah, but they take those usual <coughs> usual yeah, coalition I partners I and it's but, the same. But you know, <coughs> one party has 76%. They can literally do like anything in the law, lawmaking process. Yeah, they have and the they're majority. very... Um, how to say it? Uh, congenial, right? Friendly? No they are they have the same opinion on stuff because the leader say says them like vote this way mm -hmm. and they have very strong party discipline all right inside yeah so if one person in russia medvedev usually or putin some something mm -hmm. uh, says that uh, this law is gonna get passed mm -hmm. then it's gonna get passed all right so the parliament in this regard just doesn't exist the parliament as, a, as an institute to like uh, i get the point to discuss things or something and it all but depends what, on one person but what do the rest of the 26 or how much well they are what do they do <coughs> spread they there, say no we don't need that law for instance right usually not they don't argue <laughs> because they most of them are also interconnected with the ruling party and the reason right. of this situation, this whole situation in current Russia, hmm. is that is why. Because uh, the people in Russia is just not get used. It's just not used to um, carry out political activity. Any of this, because there was seventy years basically of the Soviet Union ruling, hmm. and there was no such a concept of like uh, political activity of the people it was all about like there and right. they didn't care and they just 
You know, I remember my just forgot about this fear of thinking and then doing. I remember my parents had an anecdote that they once had um, they did something. It was the election day, right? And they did something during the day, and they didn't really know whether or not they will actually make it on time to go to the ballot. But uh, they mi did just I don't know ten minutes before they closed. They got in. And it turned out they already had voted. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, was, See? that was their anecdote. And we have a lot of falsifications in Russia on the like an every literal election. But what what about those uh, observers? I think uh, they yeah, always well, have those observers, right? Sometimes they work, sometimes doesn't. Yeah, I guess if they don't work, then it might be the case. Yeah. And you know, th this phenomenon of uh, falsification is just massive. On, e on each level of elections, you know, we have federal elections, regional elections and municipal elections and everywhere uh, something is going wrong. And uh, the, how, what do you say it, um, how, how many people uh, went to the election and voted this percentage? Mm -hmm. uh, well, this percentage is very little even in the federal level mm -hmm. even in we choose the president it's still little percentage and you know uh, when it's little, less than half huh less than half less than half hmm. well officially this year it was like 60 or i believe uh, i Sounds i can reasonable. be mistaken but it is it's not 60 is the like the let it be 60 okay mm -hmm. 60 is the final number consisted of what consisted of uh, those who really like voted by themselves without any falsification and by the part which by, by the part of bulletins uh, or just statistics and you know numbers mm -hmm. your accounter basically you know the stuff and how you can falsificate this so i lit i believe that you know 20 of this third of these 60 percent are falsificated how would you change that i mean this, that, this yeah, well that they are not fals falsified because i always thought the only way how to how to avoid that is to have those international observers and then they just look at look at what are, what are you doing with your hands but they are not everywhere. Well, then that's they, uh, they, they work um, in a uh, separate um, areas. Maybe they they're not like in any area. What do you call this area? But how much work? how much would you need to actually have people in all of them? A couple of thousand, right? Not that much. More, more than a couple of thousand. Really? Yeah, uh, one. What do you call this area where, where uh, the people vote? Voting booth. Voting booth. Uh, we have like one voting booth. Booth. Hmm? Per two thousand and five hundred of population. Oh well, well but 3, nobody really looks in the voting booth. They just look at uh, one place. This, they drop. Yeah, the this. The, yeah, ballot. this place. I mean, this place. This yeah. Area. And uh, uh, well, three thousand per one this place. Uh, the population is one hundred and fifty million, fifty-two million. Yeah. So if we have, okay. Well, minus like children and those who don't who cannot vote, that would be uh, one hundred twenty million this amount of observers 120 million no 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 yeah oh, no, 40,000 40,000 40,000 yeah we can't afford this well then you observers. you then you just need um, and, and who is interesting in that who is interested in, in <laughs> making those observers the government should be but the government isn't because the government is interested in uh, getting result, yeah. If ruling mean, party, you know this political stuff. If if it goes their way, sure, why not? But then you just need uh, electronic voting, 
system? That that's not gonna happen. Well, well, you, you know were about Estonia, right? You were you were in Estonia. I mean, they have yeah. that. I, I was very surprised about this. Uh, you know, car, when you you can vote basically from your home computer. Yeah. And I was really surprised, and it's amazing. But it it wouldn't work in Russia because Estonia has one million population. We have like the biggest Wait, country in the world. Estonia it's probably strong, has like, huh? how much people do live in Estonia? Uh, one million or one million and I would have said at least one and a half maybe one and a half one to one and a half you know for me from Russia it doesn't matter one or one and a half million well but do you really see because um, because it, it's a big territory do you really see a lot of places where it's really jammed like in Japan because I know people that are from Asia they are really <coughs> <coughs> surprised that you don't have so many many people in the streets you don't have many people in the in the public transport well in Latvia we have, I mean no uh, no in Latvia I, in Latvia I, uh, there here is no so many people yeah so are you are used to more people well yeah because I live in Moscow there's a lot of people there it's like Moscow well, is officially is 12 million population in Moscow. Yeah. But I think illegally there is le- way more about maybe 15 million or 18 million. What do you mean by illegally? Because they just can't count all the people coming there. But those are people from Russia just r- from you... yeah, from Russia or from yeah, from uh, uh, elsewhere. Yeah. I mean that statistically I mean, by official statistics, there is 12 million population in Moscow, hmm? but <laughs> which of is course big. there's more. Yeah. Well, they they can count like everyone by heads or something. Sure. And a lot of people going even from Russia going to Moscow. Well, uh, the Russian people are basically uh, they are being registered because it's simple for Russians, but those from the Azerbaijan from Tajikistan from Uzbekistan who goes uh, in Moscow to, for work mm. and uh, because the salary is bigger than in those republics they cannot register themselves legally so they are looking for uh, the people who register them for money to some like or not in Moscow but in Moscow region maybe in, but they work in Moscow so if we count the population in Moscow, they, like the people, uh, the amount of people who is like daily in Moscow doing th- doing things, hmm? it's about I think fifteen or eighteen or maybe even twenty million. Who knows? I guess right. Yeah, you just can guess. Wasn't Azerbaijan an uh, oil-rich country? Hmm? What isn't uh, Azerbaijan an oil-rich country? Oil-rich? Yeah. Oil rich, a rich country with oil. I don't know. Because I thought when you said Azerbaijani people coming for work because you no Azerbaijan no they don't. I just misled myself. It's about Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, certainly. Is Uzbekistan somewhere near Kazakhstan? Yeah. All right. All those stan countries are like former. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan. Yeah. So no, that's other, the Stan means. Hmm? The Stan means like a state, but in a Persian way, it's all uh, former Persian territory. Persian? Really? Yeah. But Kazakhstan are all Asian, right? Well, maybe it was like occupied by Persia, no. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe but I need to double check it. Hmm? Maybe I need to double check. With the Stan? Mm hmm. Whatever, I mean. I was just told it probably means something. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't use that. So why are you saying that? Basically, you see that uh, the voting system won't change uh, to the electronics because it's beneficial. Not only because of that, because it's not so secure. Even if Estonia they hacked the system once. They hacked it, really. A group of hackers. I yeah, I don't. I don't know what that means. What What did happen? 
from from that N nothing serious, somebody but, uh, somebody got elected i don't know don't what, think this so. is serious if, no, no, if but, it would exist. what 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 happened with it i don't know they like hacked the system and uh it was a kind of social protest because in when you vote electronically by id card uh, you have no like opportunity to ruin the bulletin as a as an act of uh, civil protest you mm -hmm. know and uh, they hacked the system and ra wrote something like against all or just you know yeah that's just silly is it silly but if they meant more serious things if they wanted to like change the results no. they would do it as well they i'm not sure it's, well. i'm not sure it's imagine that, easy. that in the level of like russian federation it is very serious or the usa i'm not, I'm not so sure far it's not gonna happen because the technologies aren't so developed and uh this is uh, ironic because the more technologies developing technologies are developed yeah the more developed are the hackers and those who like would take benefits of the using the system in the wrong way i'm not really an expert but what i think it's really it's really um misguided to think that hackers could actually just I don't know, sit at a computer nowadays. I mean, more in modern times, sit at a computer, do some, some or many keystrokes, and then manipulate some numbers on a government server. I don't see that happening. There are ways. Simply, simply because you can have better encryption on this type of device than you could have had. 10 years ago on a, on a su supercomputer yeah that's correct but uh, that's what i'm trying to tell and one dude who is a cyber whatever expert told me well the problem with uh, for instance america is not that they have so much super experts hackers it's the problem that they have old infrastructure mm -hmm. in, in many places and the old the hackers have like yeah yeah better and so the old infrastructure of course i mean in the 60s and 70s they didn't know anything about firewalls or anything like that so of course you have the simpler means of getting through the tele telecommunication line to having a connection to it and stuff like that but on a 21st century computer i guess it's pretty safe to say it's it's impossible because a trillion uh, ch chain of numbers won't won't be uh, hacked. It's just that it's too much. It's almost like infinity. I'm not so aware in this. Difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that's the big. He he was stating that in America the problem is not that the hackers are so advanced. Well, it's just that it's system. old infrastructure, and old infrastructure. Yes, it's it's not really. It's it doesn't even come close. To what what today in a in a phone would be would be available, and so the biggest risks for hackers or the hacker hacking risks are that actually those who use passwords or those who have the um, clearance that they are just sort of um, very uh, well not ruthless but they are not really. Uh, adamant about their stuff so maybe they chose uh, the password to be something my name plus my pet's name or something like that right yeah and that's the thing but uh, technically you can have a smartphone almost unhackable so of course you could have the, the servers and everything else being just encrypted to the gills and no nobody could come through it's just that yeah at some point there's a cost to benefit to know some someday one anyway he would find a way to hack it there is always a way it's just about that's the that's for movies Th that's just for movies i don't know if if the group of persons are very uh, well sponsored and uh thus are very interested in into 
uh, resolving some case. Yeah, it's a case to hack the system. Well, it sounds. Here's weird, here's the thing. For instance, in Latvia, there was the, only one famous hacker case in the past ten years, and it's totally misleading because it wasn't hacking. What that dude was, uh, what what that dude uh, did was basically this. He went to uh, the government state revenue website and he saw his own tax returns. Then he just thought of what happens if I change the some some form of number because he figured, oh, if this number is for me, maybe another number would be for somebody else. Right. So he changed the number. Turns out, yeah, that's true. Those numbers were actually other people. So he just typed in whatever whatever number and he somebody else came up so he saw he started to see other people's tax returns and all the tax documentation right mm -hmm. that was the most famous hacking and what was it it wasn't even in hacking it was basically seeing oh my internet link is this so i just put <laughs> other, another number in it and you have another person Please. right that's it and then the, and then they <coughs> and then they noticed noticed that oh right you can actually get into other links, of course. So they made just the uh, yeah, right. HTTPS pro works. protocol. Yeah. And you just change it. numbers and go to another yeah, personal yeah. profile. And, and then uh, they just yeah, they just changed to HTTPS protocol. Uh, that's stupid. That's it. Yeah, but it was just a fluke, right, from the developers. It was back. Yeah. Yeah, but it was called a hacker. Hacker right? case. A hacker. Right? Yeah. It's for the price. Well, technically, you could call anything hacking if you uh, get into something that you are not supposed to get into, right? Yeah. If you see so, something so that's not hacking. meant for your eyes, you are hacking, sort of, if it's on the internet, right? Technically, it's probably hacking, but not really, not really. Because what we associate with hacking is some matrix stuff, so, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah I'm getting into stuff. CIA servers and whatever. Yeah, but that that doesn't really happen. That it's really just happened and I remember somebody telling me about a WordPress page that yeah you could even if you just take a stock WordPress page it, it probably would be unhackable unless you put a dumb password on it mm -hmm. how do you decide to to make podcasts mm, two things one is that I actually look and listen to podcasts myself uh, and uh, the second one is that um, it's fairly easy to create content this way because my biggest interest in having this setup well actually I got this setup because I did other things so I had the microphone already and mm. you know it evolved somehow but uh, now for instance you come to visit we have a discussion we have some some conversation yeah and I have content Right. But well, you know, it's easy to create content this way, but I don't think it's easy to, uh, well, use it or if you well, consume see, it this way, because well, it's very, you know, it's about... It's, it's a long format. It's yes. about two, two hours record. Yeah. And I don't know, a person should like drive car. Yeah, maybe drive car and listen to your podcast. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think it, anybody it, listens to me. Yeah. I just, I just think that I just think somebody notices something and maybe just clicks for a bit but not i mean i wouldn't listen to my podcasts right <laughs> simply because yeah they're so freaking long because but why do we do that then well simple because the technical abilities are there and in the future these